The woman was born into a fairly affluent family in Sweden and spent her entire childhood in her homeland. After completing high school, she relocated to London, where she earned her university degree. Her life seemed perfect. She pursued a career as an actress in Amsterdam, and by the age of 25, she had ascended to the position of director at a theater in Vienna. On the surface, every aspect of her life appeared meticulously planned. However, there was one detail she hadn't accounted for, loneliness. Despite her professional success, her demanding work schedule, filled with tours and business trips, left her unable to find her soulmate. While her friends had long since married and started families, Emmy spent her evenings in solitude. It wasn't a lack of attention from others that troubled her, but rather the absence of a genuine connection. In 2005, as Emmy approached her 29th birthday, she found herself unenthusiastic about the impending celebration. Seeking distraction from these melancholic thoughts, she decided to treat herself to a brief vacation in Amsterdam. After a busy day, the woman found herself on a bench the next day, waiting for a friend with whom she had plans for the evening. As she watched passersby and couples in love, she couldn't help but feel a twinge of envy. She longed for someone with whom to share her joys and sorrows. Feeling wistful, she made a wish, considering her upcoming birthday as a potential turning point. However, her moment of contemplation was abruptly interrupted by a homeless man. Emmy usually avoided homeless individuals as she was fearful of them. As the homeless man approached, Emmy felt as though she were glued to the wooden bench. He was a young man, his face mostly hidden by a beard, his appearance unkempt and emitting a strong odor. Despite a large clock visible from the bench, he asked her for the time. The girl stared at him, puzzled, and immediately replied, It's half past five. Reflecting on it now, Emmy finds it inexplicable. She had never interacted with someone like him before, always purposefully keeping her distance from the homeless. She still can't explain what drew her to engage with him that day, but it was his confidence that struck her the most. Despite the significant social gap between them, he showed no signs of embarrassment and continued the conversation. Since she had time to spare while waiting for her friend, Emmy didn't dismiss the man but chose to converse with him. As they talked, she found herself increasingly at ease in his presence. He seemed to understand her perfectly, and she found herself captivated by his beautiful brown eyes. It was an unexpected comfort, and the homeless man couldn't seem to take his eyes off her. The conversation flowed, and Emmy was surprised when her friend arrived, signaling the end of their interaction. Throughout their time together, people couldn't help but stare at the unusual couple. As they prepared to part ways, the man, whose name was Vic, jokingly suggested they meet again in five days. His confidence was both astounding and impressive. While Emmy didn't plan on attending a second meeting, and Vic would likely forget about it, she found herself unable to shake thoughts of him in the following week. After some contemplation, Emmy decided there was nothing to lose by being open-minded. With a day to spare before returning home, she took a leisurely stroll near the same bench, curious to see if Vic would show up. To her surprise, he was already there, patiently waiting for her. Their second meeting exceeded expectations. They delved into deep conversations about life and learned more about each other. Emmy fondly recalls how Vic made an effort to clean up a bit, although his hands and nails remained dirty. He arrived on a small, almost childlike horse, holding a suitcase that seemed out of place. She later discovered it contained a sleeping bag and a can of beer, a revelation that added to the intriguing mystery of Vic's character. That evening, Vic, the homeless man, opened up to Emmy about his past. He recounted how he once traveled through Europe, but quickly ran out of money, leading to a series of unfortunate events. Originally from the USA and without parents, he struggled to make ends meet spending whatever little he earned on alcohol, an admission he made candidly. This weakness eventually led him to the streets, where he lived in a park for over a year. Despite recognizing his circumstances as that of a homeless drunk, something changed within him upon meeting Emmy. Since that encounter, Vic hadn't touched a drop of alcohol. They talked late into the night, Vic's incredible sense of humor forging a deep connection between them. As the evening drew to a close, Emmy informed Vic 
that she would be returning to Vienna the next day, uncertain if they would ever meet again. Out of politeness, she gave him her phone number before bidding him farewell. Back in Vienna, Emmy couldn't shake thoughts of Vic. It felt like a fleeting reser. Amsterdam was miles away from Vienna. However, on Emmy's 30th birthday, her home phone rang unexpectedly. Anticipating another birthday call, she was surprised to hear Vic's familiar voice on the other end. Her heart skipped a beat. He greeted her with a simple hi. I remember it's your birthday, so I thought I'd congratulate you personally. Expecting a brief exchange, Emmy was taken aback when Vic expressed his desire to visit her. It was only then that she realized he was already there. When asked how he managed to make the journey, Vic nonchalantly explained that he had taken the train. Despite planning to arrive two days earlier, he had been detained by police for stealing a chicken from a store, a day etched in Emmy's memory. Since that day, Emmy and Vic have been inseparable. Vic moved in with Emmy and wasted no time in finding a job. Remarkably, he hasn't touched alcohol since their first meeting, and within just one month, he transformed into a completely different person. It was hard to believe that this handsome man was the same homeless guy from the park. Overcoming numerous bureaucratic hurdles, Emmy and Vic tied the knot two years later. Initially working as an electrician, Vic's dedication to providing for their family grew stronger when they welcomed twins six years into their marriage. He viewed this new chapter as a challenge, motivating him to work even harder to support their growing family. He went on to establish a small repairs company, which has flourished over the past 15 years, contributing to the couple's success. Their children are aware of how their parents met, although they're too young to grasp all the details. They find it amusing that their dad once lived on a bench. Emmy eventually penned a book titled, How to Fall in Love with a Man Who Lives in a Bush, inspired by her own remarkable journey to happiness. The couple even made an appearance on British television where they shared their love story and discussed the book. Reflecting on their journey, Emmy remarks, in all these years, I have never once regretted attending that meeting. We haven't even had a single argument. He is exactly the kind of husband I dreamed of all my life. Their story serves as a testament to the idea that we are all connected by an invisible thread to the people we are meant to be with.